Everybody doing good today? Enjoyed the show? Awesome. Well, this is going to be fun because I'm... Oh, good to go? Okay, hey, we're here. All right. So AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and all of that. Um, that's not the traditional messaging that you're going to hear from VMware where everything's vSphere, vSphere. That's great, but we know all of our customers are not just 100% vSphere. They're looking at public cloud. They're Now it's Cloud PKS. This is our managed Kubernetes service. So you essentially log in, you click a button, you get a cluster. We'll show you exactly what that looks like here in just a little bit. Um, I like to call it Kubernetes with an easy button because we're making Kubernetes services just as easy as your GKEs or your EKSs or even your AKS from Azure. Now with ours, we actually have a couple of um, some you know, fun features in there that I think give it a lot more value than some of your traditional Kubernetes services. And that's for us called the smart cluster. Now with a smart cluster, it's actually going to go through and manage all of the master nodes, all the worker nodes and everything for you to do smart scaling with the application. So when you first create a cluster in Cloud PKS, it's going to be empty. It's going to be zero, zero. You're not going to be paying for anything because there's nothing there. When you start deploying applications in there, it's gonna start reading the manifests of all of your applications, seeing how big it needs to be. It's gonna start auto-scaling the cluster out. Now there's lots of services that do auto-scaling on the cluster outward, but we're actually gonna be able to scale that back inward too. So if your resource utilization goes down, you start pulling applications out and uninstalling, it's going to automatically scale that cluster all the way back to zero. All of this is taken care of. We're monitoring at all times, but at the same token, we haven't changed Kubernetes in any way, shape, or form. We don't have some crazy hacked together version of Kubernetes that we're using to make this work. It is as vanilla as it gets as if you were to go and download the bits and install it manually yourself. So as far as the developers are concerned, it's Kubernetes. They have full API access. They have full CLI access. They have full UI access if they so choose to do so. So what was the problem that we had with deploying from code pipeline into Cloud PKS. Now with all of those endpoints that we talked about with cloud, uh, cloud code pipeline that you could deploy into, none of those are third party Kubernetes services. Now there's actually a demo out there in a GitHub repo that you can download and deploy out using CloudFormation and that's called the Code Suite demo. And what it does is it actually sets up a deployment going from code pipeline and it can pull in your application from GitHub It'll go through and it'll use a Lambda function to actually publish that out to Kubernetes. Now the thing with that though, is that it's not just any Kubernetes. It's not like you can just feed it an API URL and a token for access for that. It actually needs IAM access inside the account. So if you're not using Amazon to deploy it or deploying it directly into EC2 into your account where you have that IAM access, then it's going to be a little difficult for you. Now, there's, of course, ways of doing that. You can actually make the Python coding and all that from scratch to do it. But doing that's a little convoluted, and I don't really see a lot of customers actually going that route to make it work. Um, so what we're going to talk about is kind of 
a way that you can deploy into any Kubernetes service you want from the same CI CD tool set. And with that, we're going to jump into a demo here. So this is the VMware Cloud Services platform. Um, with this, this is where all of our software as a service offerings are coming from these days. Um, you log in, we use SSO for our logins, and essentially you have access to go in and request access to any of the software services that we have and utilize them on a consumption basis just like you would if you were going into Amazon and saying, well, I want some EC2 or I want some elastic load balancer. Now, if you guys have a relationship currently with VMware, we can actually set this kind of stuff up into your ELA as well, if you so choose to do that. Um, lots of different ways to be able to consume all of these new services. Now, another big change with the way that we're delivering services these days with this is our development methodology. So way back when, and even up to now with traditional vSphere and all of our on-prem products, you're gonna see major updates to those, what, maybe a dot release every six months, full release once a year, 18 months, something like that. That's a, you know, a waterfall methodology of going through and deploying software. With all of our services these days, we're actually into an agile methodology where we're constantly deploying updates to these, some of them as much as every day. Um, so you're gonna log in one day and all of a sudden you're gonna see new features, new stuff's gonna be available to you, new windows and new looks. Um, so it's always updating, always available for you um, and build in a true consumption model so that you don't have to pay for a bunch of stuff that you really don't need. So the tool that we're gonna look in here for CICD is gonna be called CodeStream. And this is part of our um, cloud automation services stack, which is cloud assembly, service broker, and CodeStream. Today, we're just gonna talk about CodeStream. Now, there's also VMware Cloud PKS that we just talked about a second ago. And I mentioned that it was kind of, you know, Kubernetes with an easy button. You just kind of click a button and you get a cluster. Let's take a look at what that actually looks like in real life, because it's not just clicking a button, but it's pretty close. So what we'll do is we'll go here and I'm gonna go into my project and I'm gonna create a new smart cluster. Now, do we want this to be a development or a production cluster? Production cluster gives you a little bit greater um, feel into the networking, so you can actually do VPC peering directly in AWS if you so choose to. Now, we'll just go ahead and do a development cluster. Then we also wanna know what location is. Right now, we're in US West, US East, and also EU for Ireland but we should be deploying out into roughly 20 more regions here within the next six to 12 months, so keep an eye on that. Um, we'll go ahead and choose US West, and then we'll give it a display name. So for this, we'll do VMware code, create. We're done. We needed three variables. What type of cluster was it? Where do we want it? And what do we want it to be called? And it's going out and deploying that smart cluster for us already. Now, if we look here, we can see that our allocated compute is zero, zero. So I mentioned that with Cloud PKS, you're only, consume, or you're only paying for what you consume, just like a traditional cloud service. Now, with this, when you go and you deploy the cluster, it's obviously gonna be zero, zero. You haven't deployed anything into it yet. Um, now you can go through and you can deploy apps all day long. If you pull everything back out, you don't have any utilization, it's gonna go back to zero again. But with this, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at a smart cluster that's already deployed. Now with this, we'll look at the CS Pipeline VKE one here. And you can see that we've already got eight gigs of memory and we've got two vCPUs allocated to it. That's because we've already started deploying stuff out. Um, with this, it'll show us what our network spaces are. If we need to go in and do VPC peering into your VPC, we can absolutely do that. And the, well, the way that this is set up is that it's hosted in our Amazon account under every all of our things. If you wanna do this, you don't need an Amazon account, you don't need an Amazon relationship, but with that VPC peering ability, you can actually have that connect directly into your VPCs as if it was in your account. But it is still a managed service from top to bottom through us. Now let's jump out and take a look at CodeStream for our CI CD service. Now one of the reasons that I see this as a big value add here is because for the most part, we don't really care what your deployment set you know, is. We don't care what the source is. Um, it gives you a lot more ability to deploy out to Kubernetes if you have maybe a team that's doing Kubernetes on-prem. If you have a team that's using Azure for Kubernetes, you have a team that's using AWS for Kubernetes, a team that's using Google for Kubernetes. Um, and strangely enough, I actually have a customer in my territory that has a little bit of Kubernetes in every single cloud. Um, just because they, they like to be cloud agnostic. If they've got developers that say this app is gonna be better and cheaper over here, they're fine with it, they go for it. So with this, let's take a look. So we have our endpoints, and an endpoint in CodeStream is just going to be either a source 
or a destination. So where you're pulling it from or where you're sending something to. So for many here, I actually have a destination set up for EKS and AKS um, and of course VKE. And then I have my GitHub account. So this is gonna be where I'm pulling my demo information from. Now with this, for our uh, Kubernetes sections, the only thing we're gonna need is the cluster URL for the API access, and we're gonna need a login token. Now generally, you're gonna set that up with a service account, that way that token doesn't expire every time, you can control the security a little better. But that's all you need. So it's not doing anything special, it's not going in and controlling you know, VKE as a whole, it's not going in and controlling Azure Kubernetes service or anything like that. It's just vanilla Kubernetes. You can use whatever endpoint you want for that. Now, let's take a look at what the pipeline looks like. This is extremely simple. We're not doing any CI or anything like that, so we're not actually doing the Docker build or anything in the pipeline. All we're doing is going out, we're grabbing the YAML file from GitHub, and we're dumping it into the Kubernetes service. Now, real quick here, um, I need to make a very, very large and crazy change to my application before we go on here. Okay, we're good. You go ahead and save that. Do a commit. And do a push. All right, so while that's working here, we'll go ahead and look at what the pipeline stages actually look like. So for this one, we only have a single deploy stage. And with this, you can add all the stages you want. So you can have a build stage, you can have a test stage, you can have a you know, teardown stage if you so choose for any of your testing here. Now with ours, we just have a simple deploy task. We have a whole series of Kubernetes stage tasks here. And with this, you can have tasks from you know, Bamboo, Blueprinting, uh, CI, Condition, Custom, Jenkins, Kubernetes. You can actually launch pipelines off of your pipeline if that's the way that you have your CI CD setup. Um, PowerShell, REST, SSH, VRO. So if you guys are using vRealize Orchestrator, you can actually set off VRO workflows directly from your CI CD pipeline in here. Now with ours, all we're doing is straight Kubernetes tasks in here. So we're going through, we're deploying the Redis master and the Redis service, the Redis slave and the Redis slave service, then the front end and the front end service. All of these tasks pretty much look the same. And all they're gonna do is they're gonna come through and they're gonna say, what's your Kubernetes cluster? We're gonna show it that endpoint that we already configured in there with the API URL and the token. We're gonna say what kind of action we want. Do we want this to get? Do we want to create? Do we want to apply, delete, rollback, and what have you? And then what's the payload source? So you can actually do a local definition and drop your YAML right in here if you so choose. But for ours, we like to use GitHub and our team for our source repositories, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. We're gonna have to use that Git endpoint from what we saw just a little bit ago, and we're gonna need to tell it the file path. So because my application is structured the same way over and over when we deploy it, I'm just gonna say go to that YAML file every time for this task and just deploy that out. So if I've actually gone through and made changes to that YAML file when it goes through and does this deploy task, it's gonna update my application. Now if we're here, we'll go through and we'll take a look at how this actually gets triggered. So we can use Garrett and we can use Git for this configuration. Now with this, I'm using Git and we've got a webhook set up here. That's pretty easy to set up if you just give it your GitHub account. It'll automatically reach out and make that API call and it'll say, you know, do you approve this? You approve it and they'll start talking to each other back and forth. So every single time you make a push to a specific repository, it can automatically trigger that pipeline for you. And if we look here through, you generate a little secret token, and you tell if you want a push or a pull request for that. Um, give it your API token and what pipeline you want that to actually trigger. So if you have multiple pipelines, you can actually set it up with different repositories that trigger each different pipeline so that you, know, you can have a little more control over what's happening there. Now if we look at our activity, we actually have some new activities. So I went into VS Code, I made a, a massive change to that one period in there, and I went ahead and committed and then pushed that code out. And that's actually gone through, and it doesn't look like it triggered the pipeline. This is what we get for a uh, lovely live demo. So if we look, let me go and check this activity here now. Of course not, love it. So I did this a little bit ago here this, uh, this afternoon, and of course it's not working because I'm being broadcast to the internet and this is a live demo, that's how it works, right? 
Um, when you go through and you make that push inside, it's automatically going to go through and execute that pipeline. So it's going to go through and it's going to say, I've deployed my Redis master service and everything straight through. You can actually come through and watch step by step what all of those executions look like. If there's any issues, it'll go ahead and tell you, you can throw it into debug mode and actually figure it out and go through and fix that deployment. Now we can also set up pipeline dashboards. So we can come through and check out our overall execution counts. And uh, this has changed my resolution here. It doesn't look so great. But you can come through, you can see all the executions, how long the pipeline executions took. So you can have a nice little dashboard to show your developers this is what your deployments are looking like. If you have specific pipelines that are failing at specific times or for specific reasons, you can easily go through here, look up what's going on, and go through and fix that pipeline execution. Makes it a lot easier for you. Yeah. I'm gonna jump back over here. And that's what I had for you. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, I know a lot of people generally don't think about VMware when they think about um, you know, native public cloud and development and stuff like that. Um, there is a lot of us here now. I think there's six or seven in the grand scheme. That's not a lot, but for VMware, there's a lot. Um, we are doing absolutely nothing but native public cloud. Um, feel free to ask your VMware rep or anything like that if you guys have any questions on any of our services. Um, if you are interested in trying out VMware Cloud PKS, we have a bunch of cards up here. Um, it is in public beta, so we're giving out $150 in free credits. So if you want to go play with it and kick the tires for a while, we're looking for input. Jump in there, play with it, see if it works for you. If you have any problems um, or any feedback, if you don't like the way the UI looks, we want to hear it. We want to see what's going on with you guys um, and let us know that we're doing good and what we can do to deliver the best services for you. Thank you for your time.